brought to you by Prescient Investment Management. Informed by science, guided by insight. Prescient Investment Management is an authorized FSP. Welcome to another episode of Honest Money. We're, we're talking tech and money today, and, and um, we're not geeking out. This, this is about personal finance. This is about the world of money. But, but, you know, the world of tech is kind of moving really quickly at the moment, and, and I'm one of those that's absolutely excited ab about the release of, of real kind of meaningful artificial intelligence tools to, to the world, and, and I think it's going to have massive implications on, on the world of money, and I, and I mean good implications. But uh, as you know, I'm... Uh, I'm not. I'm not a youngster, and and you know when you when you are talking about tech, you need to bring in people that have got more experience and, and know the stuff better. So so I'm really thrilled to have Peter join us. Peter runs a, a really brilliant YouTube channel called Money Marks, and and I think you should go and check it out. It covers quite a wide range of of, of subjects there, but but tech is a big part of that, and and how it works with money. So Peter, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Warren. I really appreciate the, the invite and I'm looking forward to the discussion. It's a, it's a very interesting one and I think one that's going to revolutionize the, the banking industry and, and money as we know it moving forward. So, so maybe I, I was thinking, you know, I was sitting in, in the middle of the Karoo in, in December and all of a sudden my Bloomberg news kind of blew up to, to say that there's this thing called chat GPT, which has kind of just been released to the world. And, and, and because I was sitting in the crew, I wasn't, you know, running around cities and, and trying to deal with load shedding. I had lots of sun and some time. Mm -hmm. I actually went to, 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 and it's wrong to say play with it, but to actually kind of experiment with it. And, and I don't think we need to do a whole show on AI because that will take up the whole show. But, uh, but, but what kind of, what I realized there was, I mean, that's the first time for me where you've, you've taken this concept AI and that, you know, everyone talks about it and how it's going to do things or whatever. And suddenly I realized here is a tool that's available to me at the time it was free. I know they're going to start, they're starting to charge for premium access, mm -hmm. but, but it's something that already makes a meaningful difference to my life. And, and I did think Gee, uh, I think this can this can move the world of money forward in in quite a big way, and and I kind of wanted to maybe get your a sense from you of what what your thoughts were around. I'm not saying chat specifically, but that I mean it's the first visible use of that technology. It's like the first, you know, the when Tesla like arrives and you actually see an electric car working and almost driving itself and not crashing every day. You go, wow, like I can see the future and it's sort of arriving. And that for me was chat. How, how do we think that works in the world of money? Yeah, so I think artificial intelligence, it, it has kind of evolved over time at a rapid exponential pace. You know, when we first started with the, the computer and the smartphones, those are all part of artificial intelligence that, that kind of changed the way that we, that we communicate, that we operate, that we live, basically. So ChatGPT, I think it, it's another revolutionary product that, or service that has been um, produced in the, I think it was released last year, November. And I saw some statistics that it was the fastest growing platform in terms of users. There, there's some chart showing the, the the amount of days it took to reach 1 million customers and it beat Google and Apple and all of those companies. So, so it's, it, it's, it's quite rampant. And now I think it's over 100 million customers. So if, if for the listeners who haven't played around with it, I would definitely recommend it. It's quite fun. And the capacity of, of this program is, is, is quite phenomenal. It, it can but write basic code it can answer most questions it can even give you date ideas so it, it's really the it's a very vast and dynamic in terms of what you can do so i think just from a normal user point you know we all work in different industries but you can utilize this tool to make your life a bit easier redundant tasks especially with research projects you know instead of having to read through 10 articles and then trying to compile information, you can use the, the AI bot to, to give you a kind of outline and then work from there. So in, in terms of our everyday use, I think it's very, very important. In terms of financial use, the, the problem with, with these AI tools are that, especially specifically for the chat GPT, it's only up, up to date until 2021, at least the version that we have now. So, you know, recent data is, is not available yet. There are some ways around it, but in terms of providing, you know, financial advice, it's, it's going to be very limited. And I also played around with it a bit because I wanted to, to see how it can help me with my own content creation. And then when I asked questions regarding like tax free savings accounts and retirement annuities, it kind of mixed up the, the different rules in terms of contribution limits and stuff like that. So we, we need to be careful to not 
you know, ask it, if you ask it, what are the five best stock picks for the year 2023? You know, just like most financial things in life, you, you need to do your own research and can't just rely on, on one, one artificial intelligence bot because it's also limited in its way and it also has selection bias. So that's just something to take, take into account. But I think, you know, what fintech companies and, and some banks already incorporate using similar tools to chat GPT is, is these robo advisors, which has a, a similar function of assessing, you know, asking a couple of questions and assessing your risk tolerance and investment time horizon. And then they can kind of compile a suitable investment strategy, not giving specific recommendations, but, you know, I think financial advisors and investment bankers and people like that can utilize these tools to remove the, I don't want to say redundant tasks of, of get, gathering the data and then using that to make informed decisions. I think that will streamline the process of, of providing financial services a, a lot more than, than having to do that. So I think incorporating that in that sense is, is a good way to, to go about it. It is limited, but I think you will always need a, a person, a real human being on the other side that, that operates, that uses the data because these tools are getting very smart and it's, it's, it's scary good as Elon Musk will put it, but we will always need a, a human component, especially in the financial industry, which is highly regulated. We need professionals that can use that data, but it's definitely a, a great way that we are moving forward. And I'm excited to see what the future holds. I think it's going to change the landscape a lot. And yeah, it's an it's exciting time that we are living in. Yeah, and, and I think you know, just to your last point, I'm, 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 I feel the same. And I'm also relieved to hear you say the same because you know, I, I spend my days as a financial planner talking to real people. And, and so I, I sit there going, I think I'm going to have a job for the next decade or so. And, and, and I hope <laughs> I will. And so it's nice to hear you say it. But, but maybe, you know, for me as well, just thinking about this, one of the things I agree with you, you know, robo advisors, I love robo advisors, by the way, I think that they are valuable to, to because a, a good robo advisor is, is significantly better than, than a bad financial plan. And, you know, lots of financial planners out there are, are, are very good and high quality, have the right ethics and education, all that stuff. But, but there are a good segment of them that are commission driven sharks that just want to sell you something so they can make money. And I think robo advisors i hope with a kind of advancing technology will put all of those sharks out of out of a job and, and i think that that's where you know a, a good robo advisor is way better than a bad advisor and, and, and that's the, the the hope for me on the one side but i do think you, you know lots of people have a spending problem and and sometimes just not knowing what they spend their money on or, or not getting sort of tiniest nudges to say hey you know i'm i'm saying it now while i'm just drinking my 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 one takeaway coffee for the day which i know i shouldn't do but but hey like you've had you know you've had three of those takeaway coffees every day for the last week you're wasting money and i feel that that is where you know some of the technology can come in that's it's our own personal trainer for money you know it's something that we we control something that's objective that says gee this is about you and you want to save and and now you you're spending like this, are you sure you want to do it? So it's almost like having a little personal trainer on your shoulder, but it's sitting in your phone and and, and telling you what to do. And, and I must say, from that perspective, I think early doors, th there will be more value added there than in complex financial planning, because uh, complex financial planning, it's, it, you know, when, you, when you're not just talking about a tax-free or ARA or a offshore ETF, and you need to incorporate everything, I haven't found... Uh, any program yet that does that very effectively without human intervention somewhere along the line. So, so I, I, mm. I, I like what you're saying. I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at our time and I, wa I want to jump around a little bit. So, so one of the things around money technology, we need to maybe talk about money technology and security because that kind of, you, you know, the, the, this, this, the whole security of, of money for me is quite a, quite, quite a concern. And I just feel, I'm, I'm not sure where we are now. Are, are, is our money generally getting less secure or we, are we, are things kind of moving in a, in a better direction? What are your, what are your thoughts around that? I think in terms of uh, start with, with like privacy concerns with, with big companies like Google and Meta use, utilize, utilizing our data on, on products. You know, if you, if you go into Facebook and you, or Meta, what they call it these days, and you browse around a bit, or even what I've noticed, if, if I have a conversation with someone in, in real time, I will start getting ads based on my interest. Say, for example, I'm talking about an inverter because we are in load shedding. I will start getting random ads, which is, which is quite scary on the one side. How do these tools recognize what we are actually saying in, in real life and um, browsing? So, you know, they, they kind of gather information about us and, you know, 
companies like Facebook probably knows us better than we know ourselves because they collect all these data points and they kind of create this, this avatar of who we are. And then they sell that to companies. We use their products for free, but then in, in essence, we are the product that they sell. <laughs> so I think that's already a, a concern that, 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 that goes along with, with these AI technology developments. They get all these large amounts of data that they can then utilize. So. That is something that is changing with the different, you know, the Poppy Act and uh, those regulatory changes coming in. And I think people also moving away from, or want to move away from these centralized entities controlling the data. Um, that's moving towards the web 3.0, but that, that's another discussion for another day. It's a, it's a bit more complex, but it's essentially creating platforms where we control our own, own data. So I think that's the first important thing to take into consideration. These companies need to be more transparent about the way that they collect our data and use our data and then we should give consent to that and data also transitions to finance finances you know collecting our information will most likely also collect more information at, about our financial behaviors so cyber cyber security risks are also quite important you know these tools can can be hacked there are cyber criminals that are very smart that are able to do it. So I think what, what companies and businesses need to, to focus on is, is going back to the basics and especially for us as consumers, you know, having two factor authentication in place to make sure that you, you keep your, your password and everything safe in order for people not to hack our accounts and to essentially steal our information and our money. Maybe there, just sorry to, to be rude, but, but let's, let's let just explain on, explain that for me. So two factor authentication, what, what, what am I, what am I doing? Tell the old man what he needs to do now. Yeah, make so, sure I'm doing uh, yeah. So in the past, if you, for example, log into your bank, they'll ask your username and password and you'll enter it and then you will log into, but you know, that can sometimes become a problem because people can hack your computer and they can trace the way that you, you enter your details. These tools are getting very smart. So now two, two factor authentication is basically just two steps. So the, the one is the initial part of logging into your bank account. And then second part is they send a notification to your phone, your phone device, your smartphone. And then you need to click on that to, to approve or authenticate the, 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 the logging process or to make a transaction. So it's just a double way to, to enhance okay. security, which most right. of the time, these options are optional to, to consumers, but I think we need to, to embrace them and to make sure, cause you know, fraud and I think identity theft is always also on the line. So having these systems in place is important to, to protect our data. And these companies also need to have that option available. And I think maybe there, you know, you know, one of the dangers with money is inertia. You know, like we we mm. we just don't do things that we're supposed to do. So so I mean, this is a real issue. I I, I come across this, you know, fi financial. I mean, let's just say financial fraud in a way a lot. And and a lot of the time, mm. people are horrified that their bank says, "Look, this is not our issue." You know, you you weren't careful with your passwords or whatever, your money's stolen and, and we're not paying or we're not topping up. There's no insurance for this, et cetera. Mm. So, so two factor authentication is a, is a, is a, is a tool that you can use. And, and, and I'm saying you must use, don't, don't just sit there going, I'll do it next week or I'm too busy now, or I'm not going to spend the three minutes it takes to read up what that needs to do and what, I, what settings I need to change. Just do it, mm. protect yourself. The bank's not going to protect you. There isn't an insurance company that's going to help you with this. And, and this is, it's literally free. And and it's free mm -hmm. protection. You know, I mean, that's the thing about honest money. You've got to do things to look after yourself and, and use the tools that are available to you. And that's a really powerful one. I mean, I just, you know, I'm, if I sound like I'm lecturing, I'm sorry, but I think it's one of those things where I keep hearing the stories. People write me an email and say, you need to talk about this. You know, XYZ bank didn't honor like the fraud thing. Well, it was your password. You got hacked and, and mm -hmm. you know, the, 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 the issue wasn't actually theirs and, and they can't take care of everyone who's not taking care of themselves. That's not always the case. Sometimes the banks are at fault. I'm not saying they're always right. They're not but by no means all good people, but, but, but just, gee, like use the tools that are available and, you know, it's basics. Like it's, you know, take care of the basics now and that's a, a new base. Yeah, no, for sure. And I, I also think, you know, there's all most, most problems in the financial field that I've found as a, as a big, you know, as, as the more that I learn about financial literacy is, is basically having financial literacy, because if you are aware of these scams, because people, you know, scammers are smart. They, they will find ways to get your information. They might send you, but what I see is quite popular is they will impersonate a celebrity or, um, influencer, somebody that you kind of feel like you trust and they will ask you then as on behalf of this person, you know, they'll create the, take your profile picture and then they'll download all of your videos and re-upload it, making it look very similar to, to the actual person. 
and then they will ask you personal information, giving you these investment opportunities that, you know, it's quick money, get rich, quick schemes. And, you know, for us, it's, uh, we know that it's probably too good to be true, but if you don't have the financial literacy in place to be aware of the potential scams, then you're probably going to fall for them. And I think that's, that's the, the root cause of most problems is not having financial literacy. And I'm glad that there are more platforms available. And that also kind of reconnects with, with the whole AI and digitization. You know, we have access to the financial information. It is there, it's growing. People just need to be willing to do that. I think 20, 30 years ago, it was not the same. You know, you had to go to the library. You had to actually physically get into your car, drive there, find a book and read up. Now it's so easy to get access to this, to this information. And it's very important that we are willing firstly and able to self-educate ourselves about these things. Cause if you don't know, you don't know, probably going to fall for a scam and lose money and learn the hard way. Most of us do, but it's always better to learn from someone who, who already made the mistake and then, you know, not repeat what they did. Yeah, they've paid your school fees, hopefully, and and so yeah. you'll be grateful and, and and don't repeat. So, so Peter, we're we're almost out of time, and I need to ask you my favorite question for every new guest, which is: if you had to meet, you know, your younger self coming out of school now, what would be, with the benefit of 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 the experience you've developed now, what would be the one kind of life lesson you'd love to teach yourself? It doesn't have to be money. If it's money, equally good. This is the honest money show. Hmm. So. I, I would probably keep it within the, the, the money and financial sphere because when I finished school and even after I graduated as a veterinarian, I didn't have any proper education in financial literacy education school, unfortunately, do not teach us enough. I'm, I'm hoping that that will change. But, you know, when I got out of uni, I started earning a salary and I didn't really know how to manage that. And also by means of trial and error, I kind of... I've, learned how to how to improve my finances but it took a long time to to read up so i would say you know in the first couple of of months or years of your career it's important to invest in in, in your financial literacy buying books i know that there are many great overseas books that, that teach us financial principles but also within south africa that that will help us to just better educate ourselves and you know just starting with the basics and and having having the willingness to to improve and you know even if you just start by Tracking, setting up a budget and then tracking your expenses and making sure you're living below your means and saving and investing the difference. I would always advocate, you know, for a beginner to just have a financial plan in place to help them get started, to help them set up. But it's also important to educate yourself so that you can ask, you know, make informed decisions and ask the right questions to the financial planner and not just blindly follow their recommendations. Because as you mentioned in the past, you know, within every industry, there are the good apples and the bad apples. And unfortunately, some some planners will be more commission driven. So fees are very important to take into consideration, but you will only know if you spend the time to educate yourself. So learn how to manage your finances and then use a professional to help you with the more complex, you know, high value things. And that's what I would have recommended to myself. And you don't only have to start when you start learning, when you start working, you can start, you know, at high school as well. The, the earlier you start, the better off you will be especially if we talk, talk, start talking about compound interest and investing early on. So yeah, I think education is the most important part. And luckily there are many platforms available for South Africans and it's growing every day. So I'm, I'm glad to see that positive movement. Yeah, I think it's a PowerPoint, you know, there, I mean, there, there, there is so much available to read, to watch, to listen, you, you know, there, there isn't an excuse. If you can make the time, you can get the information and, and you'll learn to filter the good from the bad, you know, don't follow everything blindly, even though, even honest money, we we're not perfect, you know, but you kind of figure it out over time. And I think that's an important point. So Peter, I really appreciate your, your time. And I think it was really, really interesting for me to, to kind of have the conversation conversation with you. If you want to check Peter out, I think go to YouTube. Money Marks is his channel and and I'm sure we'll have you on the, on the show again. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Warren. I really appreciate the time and yeah, I'm looking forward to the next, uh, next episode. Brought to you by Prescient Investment Management. Informed by science. Guided by insight. Prescient Investment Management is an authorized FSP. 